Hey, it's Coach Chris with HoopsKing.com, and I want to talk about pass and cut offense, and specifically uh, in the Villanova women's offense with Coach Harry Peretta. Now, it's just any other, like any other pass and cut offense, and this is what they call a one. So if they yell out one, it's going to be a pass and a cut. So you're just basically in a space of floor. And that's one thing this will do, this offense, Villanova offense does, it's five out, it gives you uh, great spacing on the floor, so it really opens up this lane area. So, you know, pretty basic on a pass and cut, we pass the ball over here, we're going to cut to the hoop, head under the rim, and these players are filling up, and the player that cuts through will fill the empty spot over here. So we maintain all five spots filled at all times. Now, if you'd like to learn the complete five out offense from Harry Peretta, just rent these DVDs from our website. Now, I think a five out pass and cut is great to start, especially with the youth players, to teach them proper spacing, because any good offense has good spacing and good movement. So we can't be standing around and watching our teammates do something. So uh, this is a great offense, again, for youth high school. I kind of see it as a base offense where if we don't have anything going, if we're not moving on offense, get into the five out pass and cut and keep moving. So I, I coach a young group of boys and when we get stagnant, what I tell them to do is not ever stop moving. Everybody is just constantly cutting and passing and filling up. And what the problem will be with this uh, pass and cut offense, one thing to run into with it uh, whether it's five out or four out, is let's say this guy passed and cut through. Okay, so the ball went over here. So now this player is going to fill up here. Okay, so he comes and fills up. And what happens is that pass is not made to him as he is coming to that area of the floor. He, the problem starts when he comes to a complete stop and then the pass is made. Well, that defender, you know, if he's playing good defense, he can beat him to the spot, but let's just say he's a little bit behind him. What happens when he stops is, well, the defender doesn't stop and you can get a lot of turnovers that way where you're throwing the ball because your offensive player comes there, stops and stands and looks for the ball and the defense doesn't. Now, of course, yes, he should run a back door there, but that doesn't always happen. So what I tell my players to do is to not stop moving. So when that pass is made over there, this player will fill up to that spot. He doesn't get the ball. He just keeps right going through until the next guy. And I'll tell you what, this next guy that filled up to here, he goes through and doesn't get the ball. He'll fill up. Probably nine out of 10 times that second guy will be able to catch the ball as he is coming to the basket. We don't want to catch that ball and be standing and waiting for it. And I think that's an important aspect uh, for any level that's running the pass and cut uh, just because it gives that defender a chance to jump in there. And if you just keep moving, it never really gives them that chance. And then when you get all this movement going, so now we got people moving and moving and moving, it's going to open up drives for people. Okay, you're going to get a lot more drives when people are cutting and moving and it's fast and it's not stop and stand pass and cut. Stop and stand pass and cut isn't very good. You want to keep them moving and keep people going through and it just opens up the lane and it'll open up a lot of drives for you. Now you may wonder if you're running pass and cut, say, I want to get the ball inside to a post. Well, you can always do that. Let's say you want this kid to post up. They pass and cut, they can stay in there. They don't have to come out right away. They could stay in there for a pass. You know, that pass goes there, and then that pass goes there, then they can get out of there and fill out. So that player can cut through. So you can you can put a player that you want to get post touches in there and you can do that with any player i think if you're running a youth team you could do that with any player and of course there's so many options off of the having a post in there where you're basically going to a four out one in uh pass and cut but for the five out if you want to leave somebody in there tell them to stay in there for an extra pass and then get out of there and fill out and it'll just create more movement more spacing and you know give a different look to your offense as well so let's take a look at some of villanova's pass and cut offense 
All right, so here Villanova was in a five out, but it's going to morph right into a four out one in with a high post. And so they will give their offense different looks. And now we have people cutting through, and we're using the high post there as a back screener. Okay, now we're going to go, get a good passing cut here. And you can see the defender has violated our principle of staying between your man and the basketball. So now the offensive player is on top, and she's going to be able to cut right to the basket, and we don't get any weak side help. Good, easy passing cut layup here. Okay, so now you're going to see Villanova. They're going to start out running flares on this. So here's a down screen. Now here comes a flare to the point guard at the top. She's going to pass. Here comes 21 is going to get a flare. And so it's not always just straight pass and cut or one thing or the other. And so now here comes the basket cut. So they ran a couple flares, and then they saw the opportunity there for the basket cut. And that's what you can do with your players. Once you teach them this, you can really turn it over to them and let them play. And you can still dictate what goes on uh, by calling out different things, and we'll get into that later but in this video it's about pass and cut so now this is designed to be a flare you can see the player coming to set the screen but the offensive player reads that her defender's hugging her and then the defender makes the mistake of opening up to the ball and not going with her player not maintaining a line between her ball and her man and then the weak side help is late in this instance so another good pass and cut All right, now in this situation, you're going to see the point guard just take off and cut. So this is in transition. She makes the pass, and we're just getting right into the offense. We don't have to stop and stand, and she makes a real good cut, and they miss her right there. Again, you can see the defender has their back turned to the basketball, so they have no idea where the ball's at, and she just makes a really good cut there. They just missed her. Here the play continues, and the second cutter comes through. And really, she's open if she wants to throw the ball there. Now I'm going to freeze it right here because it's a really good example of what I was talking about on the board where I have my players not stop moving. So in this situation, the player doesn't stop moving when she cuts. She realizes her defender is behind her and she's just going to go straight to the hoop and she gets it. Okay, so we're talking about pass and cut. We have to talk about how to pass the basketball as well. So you can see here, she's not even looking at her cutter. And that is going to happen to you a lot when you run the pass and cut. I don't care if it's a little kid's team, a high school team, a college team. This is what can happen is your players start thinking about who they're going to throw the ball to next instead of being an offensive threat. Here, number two should be squared up thinking shot to make her defender come out and guard her with her hands up, and then she could step by and get that ball in there. But she's not even looking at the cutter. So if she faced up, looked at the basket, she could see the cutter instead of thinking about where she's going to throw the ball to the next person coming up. And that is just a problem when you run this. You have to discipline your players and teach them to think shot first so that the, their defender will have to play them and then they can make plays from there. So you can see the ball goes above the head and the ball stays, stays above the head and just not really where to go, but luckily her cutter kind of bailed her out there. Okay, I want to throw this one in here because he does a great job of passing the ball to where the player is going to be, not where he is. So he leads him right in stride to the hoop so they can easily score the layup. Okay, now this one's going to be another example. Instead of looking at the cutter, 23 is looking, who am I going to throw the basketball to next? And really, as you watch that cutter, He's got his defender beat. That should have been a layup, but he's not even looking at him. And that's one thing you're going to have to make sure you demand of your players is, is that they turn and face the hoop when they catch the ball and that they're looking at the cutter. Be sure to click the link in the description to get your free coaching forms and download them. I'll send them right to your email immediately. Hey, be sure to subscribe to our channel over here. You can also click and rent coaching DVDs through the mail from the best coaches in the game, or you can watch a related video your choice. Go ahead.